Oh, hello. So welcome to the inaugural installment of a new series I'm going to call, at least for now anyway, uh, Indie Game Dev Lab. And what I do is I look at different works in progress games and record myself playing them for the very first time with the sort of the idea of allowing the developer to get a sense as to what new players would expect. Uh, kind of the same format as I've seen people, you know, use for Ludum Dare games in particular. You know, they'll load the game for the first time, and it's, you know, I've had a few of my games featured on those kinds of, of, of shows, and it's surprisingly helpful to see where new players, how they, how they maneuver through the games, and sometimes you don't want to see it, but you need to know if they get stuck anywhere. Uh, so the way this works is if I get somebody that sends me their game, I will record myself playing it for the very first time. And this has to be done in one take, so if I make any mistakes, unfortunately, those are kind of um, kept in there. Uh, but then I'll you know, show some footage of the game and then talk a little bit about you know, what, what my opinion is. Uh, this is Project Space RTS by, um, I found it earlier, yeah, Alex McGee, uh, Blue Quill Studios LLC, copyright 2022, and this is the very first game in this series. So uh, I'm going to transition over to my uh, recording. That I've already done this, by the way. I've already played this. Um, I recorded my initial footage already. So we'll transition to that and let you all see how I how I did. All right, so here we have our inaugural game, uh, Project Space RTS. I assume that is a temporary name, but we'll see. Um, one thing I should mention is that I run a Linux system, uh, Pop OS, actually, and so uh, Windows games I would have to run with Wine. Now, as far as stencil games go, I've had you know pretty good luck running these off of Wine, so I'm assuming this should work, but just so everyone knows, if there are any glitches, it very well could be wine and not part of the actual game. We'll see what happens. So we have a game by Krim, uh, Blue Quill Studios, and the credits disappeared. So campaign is not available, uh, options are not available, but we have free play credits and there they are. Made by Alex McGee, Blue Quill Studios, LLC, 2022. So I don't see anything here that would give me instructions on how to play. So I'll just, I guess, hope that everything is pretty self-explanatory. And already we got something going on here. Chips, energy, food, and research. So as I would have said in the introduction, uh, part of the, one of the, I guess, kind of, a little gimmicks of this series is playing games for the very first time so that uh, the developers could get some insight into what what new players might think so I have not played this before at all actually this looks kind of familiar maybe I would have seen a screenshot not sure what's going on though but uh, chips is going up so that must be some kind of money uh, got energy, food, and research. And, oh, there we go. So I'm not really sure what my goal is here, but I'm assuming, since these say unclaimed, that I want to claim these planets. So let's see what we can do here. I got a surface view. That's neat. Okay, so we got um, things. Okay, I don't want to demolish that. I'm not sure what these are, though. <laughs> uh, I like the, um, the icons here. I got a house. Uh, settlements generate credit based on surrounding metal deposits. Okay, uh, shipyards allow for the construction of simple ships and settler ships. Power plants generate energy based on surrounding Okay, that's what the crystals do. That is for... Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, that's neat too. So that, um, 
And it tells me how many crystals are, are neighboring here. So I want to build this, I'm assuming, as close to the crystals as possible. And that spot might be the perfect. Okay, let's see what the other buildings do. A research lab generates research from all surrounding resources and then biofarm that can generate food based on surrounding biomaterial. Okay. Uh-oh. And what's going on here? I assume those are bad guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I build any weapons? Yeah, okay. We'll put a shipyard in here. Uh, well, that, that was quick. I'll try again. Now that we know what we're doing, it'll all go smoothly, right? Oh, here we go. New planets. Okay, so I, I need to be quick now. So we'll generate a um, power plant. Uh, I had better crystals last time. That's kind of neat, though. You get random planets. Yeah, 90. That'll be good enough. Okay, I assume that's doing something. Uh, make some ships. That looks like a timer, so, okay. So that's making energy. I'm assuming that's going up. I don't remember what I started with. Ah, something's happening. Okay, I can build ships. Okay. So I'm assuming, okay, basic fighting ship. That's probably what I need yeah, that, that's probably why I need to defend my planet from the little red arrows. So there we go. I'm not sure how many I'll need here, but I'll build. If they sent three out, um, I'll do one better. I'll do four. Okay, I can watch my resources. I got 27 food, 40 research. I still have plenty of chips, and I still have 113 energy, but I think my planet's now pretty safe, so we can explore a little bit. Um... Credits, 250 credits, was a credit a chip? Maybe, food, energy, I'm confused, how do I get credits? Well, maybe that's chips, okay. So, shipyard, oh yeah, okay, so credits is chips, because when I built another shipyard, the uh, credits went, or the chips went down. Hmm, I don't know if I made a mistake. <laughs> do I really need to? Okay, if I demolish the building, I get a refund. Seems no, I didn't get my chips back. I got my energy back. Uh -uh. I made, made, made a mistake. Okay, so if I build a settler ship, does it cost too much? Okay, let's see. Oh, good. Okay, so those guys are working. How do I get new planets? I assume that's what I need a settler ship for, is to get to new planets here. Yeah. How do I start over? <laughs> oh, I can do research. Okay, maybe I just need to get some research. But like, I need to get, okay, chips is, okay, so that's what, that's what that, that's a timer. Okay, so every eight ticks, I get five chips. So I think what I need to do here, how many I need to get a settler? Cost, uh-oh, oh no, 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 my ships, what do I do? Um, build. Yeah, okay, <laughs> back on track, but I lost all my money. At this point, I probably should mention, I'm not the best at these types of games. Um, the funny thing is, I used to really like it. I, I, um, oh, I lost. Like, World of, not World of Warcraft. I actually never played that one. What was the original called? The um, Warcraft. <clears throat> then Warcraft 2 and the um, the other one, the Star one, Starcraft. Like, I, I had those when I was growing up, and I liked them. But I kind of moved on to more... Um, City building games, if I wanted something that was you know, building focused, I lose. All right, well, now that, now that I know not to build, oh, here we go, 600 ships. Not to build too many, oh, here we go, too many shipyards. Now I can build some settler ships. So do I need a power plant? Uh, probably. I'll get here, 180, 60. Okay, that'll probably do. 
Biofarm, no, I need, okay, that must be building. I will need a house. Okay. That's actually a good question. So if I pull up one of these menus, like if I want to build something, how do I close this? Oh, there we go. Okay, so for the ships, I want to build, I know the numbers are there. That would be one thing I would kind of like to see would be a, a quick way to gauge just about how many um, enemy ships these guys could take out. Because going back to Warcraft, like I, I, it's been a long time since I've played it, but I remember you could click on the units and it would tell you some stats about them. So right now I'm not sure how many uh, hit points these guys have together, but based off my prior experiences, I don't think that's going to last me more than a couple waves. So let's build a settler ship. Because I think the trick is going to be to expand. Okay, so that must be a settler ship. So how do I send that guy out? I want to build another. I can't afford another one anyway. I'll build another simple one though. Okay, that's not Earth. Uh, planet surface view. I'm running out of chips. Actually, that'd be one good question. How do I get more chips? I can only get five. Uh oh. Okay, there's bad guys. Oh. Oh. Okay, so I can't click, but I can highlight. Now can I send them? Send them that way. Yeah. Okay. So you right click. So he's now going to start over there. So he's circling. Okay, something's happening. Am I getting money off of it? Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. So I guess I've taken that over now. And yeah, it's a much bigger planet. So now, if I just had some money, I could do stuff. Okay, well, a uh, couple of things I think would help me right, uh-oh, yeah, right off the start. Okay, can I pan? Okay, I can pan, but okay, they must be taking that over. Oh, okay. That must be the enemy, yeah, team two. Hmm, I think they took that over. No, it says unclaimed, but they got a lot of triangles. If my guess is they're going to maybe come over here next, but see, I'm out of money. Yeah, it costs 60. So, yeah, that'd be one thing that would help me get more into this from the start is just having a better sense of what to do. Um, <laughs> that's not good. So, I assume because this is an alpha build, I can't see like the. Um, you know, weapons firing or anything, which is fine. But I feel like I just need a little bit more of a nudge into what I'm supposed to do to survive. Just like a... That said, I'm making progress, but no, there's no, no quick way to start over. Yeah, how do I get more chips? I thought taking the planet over would get me chips faster, but that doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, is there anything here I can build? Uh-oh. Well, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I think I just lost. We'll give it one more try. <clears throat> Press R to reload. One more. Okay. So, plant service view. Actually, that's a good question. Do I need the power plant? Because that's it's not that expensive. Energy 35. Um, I don't think I need a submit right now. Shipyard. Yeah, I probably don't need a power plant because I can put a shipyard there. Okay, that's being built. What do I think here? See, I think that I got plenty of chips. 495. So what was eating up all my chips? Oh, it must have been the ships. Yeah, because that's 60 each. Okay, so I built three of those. Settlers 150. Here's a question. If I build four, will they last longer? Because uh, I want some money for the other planet, too. 
So it does give you some time to figure things out, but I, I feel like a easier level to start off with would go a long way. Like a tutorial level, or even just you know, just have a sequence of levels, and then this you know first one is much easier. Maybe if there's a goal just to collect a certain number of resources, not even worry about enemies. That that I don't like. I said I don't remember a lot of the RTS games I used to play because I want to say like Warcraft. I want to say they had an early level where your primary goal was pretty much just to build resources, and you don't really have enemies, at least not to any substantial degree. So we're doing something here. So if I build another shipyard, am I getting chips faster? Because I was getting five per, yeah, see taking over planets does not help me get more chips. I'm actually not sure why I want to take over more planets because I feel like all I'm really doing here is spreading my resources too thin. Other than I guess it buys a little time because I noticed the enemies seem to hop planets but I can see they're there. I, I feel like I'd be better off just keeping all my resources. Yeah, I killed the um, settler. See, I'm actually not sure what to do. Of course, this is also an alpha build, so there's, I think, a very good possibility here that there is no more nothing else to do because there's quite literally nothing else to do this is all that's been programmed which in that case you know if there's like you know buildings or things I could construct that would get me more chips because that's really where I'm getting stuck and I feel like as a player if I had a, a better sense as to how to get chips early on that would help steer me in the right direction because right now Seems like no matter what, I can only get five a day. Unless I'm going to look one more time, unless I missed something. A, yeah, bio farms generate food. But I don't think I can sell excess food or anything. Uh, power plants generate energy. I don't really need energy, though. Yeah, shipyards allow for construction of simple ships and settler ships, but <laughs> only need one because I can spend my money faster. Like I, I spend money faster than the shipyards can generate ships. And we got another wave of bad guys here. Like, so here's another question. How do I send bad guys over there? Oh, could I do that? Yeah, because they start with three. Now, can I have to start over? Actually, it would be nice if there was an easy way to start over. Oh, research points. Oh, there's more stuff. I need research. Okay, okay. Now we're moving along here, because see if you get research, 100 research points, I can unlock tier one. Okay. Go see why I kind of missed that, because I know I opened that menu before. Okay, wish I could save my game. Um, build a ship, yeah, I want a shipyard. I don't think I need a power plant right now. We got this. Okay, we're gonna do some research. How did I get research before? Okay, that goes up too, okay. Now maybe there's something I can do to generate research faster, but I got tier one just by waiting long enough. So I just have to survive long enough for that to tick up to a hundred. Okay. So you open build, you open four seems to buy me enough time that I think I'm gonna be able to um, get my research. So we'll build four. Yeah, and they, I think I'm actually starting to figure this one out. I'm going to stand by what I said. A, a little more guidance would help, but, you know, again, you know, this is an alpha build, so, you know, it's very well that could be planned and just never implemented yet. That's the problem with alpha builds, is you, you don't, unless you know the developer and been following along, you're not always going to understand exactly what's, what's to come. So it's not a criticism, it's just more of a, you know, here's something to, I would suggest keeping on your, um, on your radar. More guidance, especially for someone like me that I don't play a lot of RTS games. I can hear, I'm talking about Warcraft. I mean, that was 90s, late 90s. Okay, so we got Research 60. You know, can I take, okay, guys. 
Oh, okay, you can send him over there, okay. He goes over there. So here's a question. If I just build a whole bunch of these little simple ships and send them over there all at once, could I take over their planet? Uh, we'll try that later. Yeah, he's needed there. Okay, so they're gonna fight it out. Lost a guy. It's okay, we'll build another one. I want to hold on to those chips though, because when I get a hundred research, I, that's the thing right now is the waiting game. By the way, I have not heard any sound or music or anything yet, and this is one of those things I don't know if they're supposed to be sound and wine, because that is one issue I've, like, usually with wine, it runs stencil games pretty well, but the one issue I periodically run into is sound sometimes doesn't work. So, you know, this game might have a soundtrack. I don't know, but we do have research. So, unlock T1. So, we can build Shipsmith, Defensive Platform, Dig Site, City, Biofarm, and oh, what are we going to do? We need to do it fast. So, open up Surface View. Uh, where's a tower thingy? Uh, what do these do? Uh oh, my little tooltips. Oh, there they are. Defensive platform can be upgraded to the uh, defensive buildings for this planet. Ooh, 200. Uh, dig site or large plots that can be search for artifacts. Oh, neat. Okay, you got artifacts in here. Power plant. Okay, so maybe I want to build one of those. Um, stick it down right there. Oh, that took away a lot of chips, so that was kind of expensive. Yeah, I may have made a mistake. Let's see. No, I think I just lost. It's doing so well. Like, why is it not, not working? Defensive platform. Did I not read the instructions? <laughs> Be upgraded to defensive buildings for this planet. Yeah, I think I made a mistake. We'll get one more try, just because I want to see what happens if I build a whole bunch of simple ships and just send them out there. So, race against the clock here, build a shipyard, get that going, and I'm just going to dump all my chips into fighters and go for broke. Okay, there's the one. Oh, you have to pay upkeep on these. Upkeep, 0 0.3. Okay, so I don't know, is there a way for me to tell my income? Yeah. I don't know, this is going to be my last try anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to go for it. Okay, so uh, I got 200 chips. See, can I build one more? I got 90. Okay, I've built all I can. So we're going to hop up here then hop up here. <laughs> well, I found the strategy. There we go. I've destroyed every planet. So I think I'm going to quit here on a high note. However, I don't have a score. So I don't know. I don't know how to get points. But again, it's probably not implemented yet. So there we go. Uh, so what do I think? Uh, actually, I think this is a good, good start. Uh, obviously, it's a little rough around the edges, particularly on the UI. That would be, uh, that would be, I think, if I had any complaint, that would be, that would be it. the a, the UI. I feel like it could show me a little bit more, not just information, but also kind of guiding me to take the right first steps. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. <laughs> I hate to say it again because it's the only game I've been citing, but uh, Warcraft. Because I remember that, the original one, the 1995 or 96 one, I don't remember exactly when it came out, but it's very simple. I don't think it was the first RTS, but it's definitely the first I played, and it's the first time I heard that phrase, real time strategy. And you had two resources you had lumber and you had gold. But even just you know having that on display there, was enough to suggest a goal. You know that implies a goal. Uh, in this case, uh, my goal is to get more wooden gold. 
in this game, you know, we do have the UI there that gives us that information, chips, energy, food, and research. But what's not so clear is which I have to gather and which I have to um, just wait for. You now, you could have some information here that says you're gaining chips at a rate of five per, I don't even know what that is, days, hours, <laughs> kind of like Cookie Clicker or any of those other idle games. That's actually what this kind of reminds me of, um, a little bit of an idle game mechanic, not like Cookie Clicker or any idle game where you have a little display that says plus however many you know units per minute, something like that. Because I think in this case, to be honest, I don't know what my goal is. At least I, I know in a broad sense it's to win, right? But as far as steps to take it, to get to that point, I feel a little lost. Uh, and again, that very well could be because this is, it's not even an alpha build, it's a pre-alpha build. So, some of these things the developer might already be aware of, some of them maybe, maybe they're not, I don't know. Uh, if they're not, I think that would be a good thing to keep in mind is, you know, how can you design the UI, the menu system, and even some of the first actions that happen to steer the player in the right direction. Uh, in this case, I have a feeling the way I won was not the intended way to win, because I really didn't have to do anything but build a few, a few ships and send them out there. Uh, that could be a balancing issue. I feel like the intent is to do something with all those buildings, and then over time, you build up enough power so that you win. So how do you guide the player to make the right decisions? I'd really hate to say it, but you're probably going to have to hold my hand on the very first level. I guess the trick is to do that in such a way that the player doesn't feel like they're being being steered. You know, they're making their own decisions, but you've kind of played a little bit of a psychology game, getting them to make the decision you want them to make. I don't know how to do that. Uh, that's really hard and I'm trying to figure that out with my own games too because that's one thing I notice in my game is the first couple of levels are really tough now the game I'm working on is a platformer so you know much much different genre but those same issues are still there in the first couple of levels you know how do I how do I know what I'm supposed to do in a way that makes me feel like I've accomplished something yeah, I think that's much easier said than done, but I think if you can find a way to pull that off, I, I'd be hooked in hooked into this. That said, I did find this pretty fun. Um, I mean, I've kept this recording going for a while now, so that must tell you something. So yeah, I think you know, this is a great start. I uh, would like to see you know just a little more guidance. Uh, other than that, I don't really feel like I can comment on that much else because it's quite clear this is an early build and there's a lot to do and I, I would say you know, probably most of the things I'm thinking of to do next, the developers are probably already thinking about them about that themselves. Um, but again, really good start. So quite enjoyed it. All right, and we're back. So that was my initial playthrough and now, well, since I can now take multiple takes, so we're out of the past and back in the present, which is the past as of recording <laughs> anyway, um, now that I can actually take my time to think a little bit about what I want to say and more importantly, retake it if I say it wrong, um, I feel like my thoughts on the UI were a little bit scattered, but what I found, go over here real quick. Um, Warcraft 1, I'm going to here, save an image real quick and pull it up here. Warcraft 1, I did a little bit of research since I did the recording and realized I said the wrong thing. It wasn't so much the UI that, that steered me, although it kind of was. And like I said, I think my original point is still valid. There, there's the game. Um, I think my original point is still valid, but what's more important is that when you start, you only have 
a couple peasants and I think maybe a couple couple um, guards. You only have a couple peasants, and most importantly, your options are very very limited. You can build a town hall, you can build a road, you can build a barracks. And I think that's pretty much it. So that might be going back into uh, project space here. You know, if I take a look at how many options I have, you know, it's it's five. It may not seem like that many, but I feel like it almost might be. You know, especially that power plant. You know, if you, if you look at the recording I did, you know, one of the very first things I did is I built a power plant. Now, you know, since I play a lot of city builder games, of course, you know, I'm going to build a power plant first because you need power, right, before you do anything else. Well, it took me a while to figure out that actually no, uh, you don't need the power plant initially because uh, you, you have really enough energy. Well, <laughs> as I showed, you actually have enough energy to win from the very beginning. Again, I think that was unintentional, but you know, clearly I have enough energy to build a few ships and really that uh, shipyard seems to be the most important building to build first. The settlement? I don't know. Like, I, like I've mentioned before, this is an alpha build, so maybe in, in future versions these other buildings are more important to build first. If that's the case, then I feel like there needs the player needs to be given more time really just to figure everything out. Um, but as it is right now, I feel like these shouldn't even be options. Because money's pretty tight, you know, I only have 530 chips, and then you saw as by the time I accumulate enough to build a second army, uh, I'm really under, you know, constant threat of attack. So I pretty much just have one shot to get my initial settlement correct. So, you know, waste, I feel like this would almost be a waste of money to build these settlements, and definitely the power plant, I mean, that's you know, 150 chips, <laughs> which I guess is another thing. It says credits here and chips there. That's you know, obviously just a simple oversight. Um, that said, don't overestimate how much a new player is going to be able to understand as well, because you know, clearly I stumbled a little bit trying to figure that out too. Um, but yeah, having a settlement there, oh, I already lost. See, I'm not even paying attention to that. But that's my fault, not paying attention to what I'm doing. Really, I just wanted something in the background because it's boring just listening to me, me speak with nothing going on. So there we go. Put this in uh, demo mode. So yeah, um, going back to what I was saying before, I feel like the, the player should really be limited to exactly what's required to build a stable planet. And as of this build, a stable planet is pretty much a shipyard and a ship. Or at least four ships seems to be all I need. And the other problem is I don't really have any stability. So I need time to think, uh, in particular, you know, what research to conduct um, once these you know, bad guys come into the planet there's they you know they just kind of mow me over <laughs> at least within a couple rounds so i don't really have a lot of time to experiment i think a new player is going to need more time just to play around a little bit now that very well could be the case already because you know if you remember if you go back to the main menu there was a campaign mode and i'm in free play mode uh, free play mode might just be you know, intended for, you know, your player that knows what they're doing. You just want to play one random game, so here you go. Um, have fun with it. Whereas maybe the campaign mode would have, you know, things a lot more restricted until you unlock them. Uh, I think that would be a very good thing for a new player. You know, let them build what's needed and maybe see if it can guide them a little bit more into getting to a stable position. Um, kudos, though, for making me always feel like I'm on edge. You know, that, you know it's definitely... You know, definitely want to be able to do that because that builds suspense and gets the player engaged. On the other hand, it can be a little frustrating when you're new if you feel like you you know don't know where you're going because at, at that stage I'm not invested in the game at all, and in that case I might be willing just to give up. You know, once I've invested some time into learning how to play this, it's, you know I'll be able to take more frustration 
and not walk away. Uh, in this case, you know, again, it, not to sound critical because obviously this is an alpha build, uh, but just you know, something to keep in mind is the future. You know, as the future developments emerge, uh, you know, maybe keep an eye on that new player experience maybe hold their hand a little bit more, especially in the campaign. And I feel like at least, assuming the other buildings don't have a future use, if you let the player build a shipyard and some ships, and that's it, uh, you know, if, they, if that's at least enough that they can get some stability, like maybe I'm gener generating enough chips or the simple ships cost le uh, sufficiently cheap that I can build them at roughly the same rate that I lose them from the enemies, and at least then I have stability. And as long as I keep my ships up, then, you know, you know I can, as long as I'm keeping an eye on my planet, then I, I can feel a little more confident that I have time to explore other things, you know, maybe way around and build up some other resources. Of course, if it's that easy to defend your planet, well, then maybe the other planet needs some defenses as well, because it shouldn't be that easy to go take them over. So yeah, balance. <laughs> that's that's really what it comes down to is balance. Um, other suggestion would be uh, just a little bit more feedback. You know, are the ships firing or not? I don't really know. Now again, I'm not really sure about sound. You know, maybe sound's not implemented. Maybe it's not working. Uh, again, I'm running this off of wine, so I don't really know. That said, I've only had a few stencil games not play sound on wine, so my guess is there's no sound right now. But yeah, that feedback is very helpful, so I know my ships are firing, and you know, even if nothing else, just have more fun things to look at, you know, especially when I'm sitting there waiting for the research points to accumulate. I don't really have much else to do, so you know, just give me some things to look at. And that might go a long way too, but yeah, um, you know, original assessment I think still stands. You know, I did enjoy the game. Uh, I just, you know, been, I have my little wish list now for fu future, um, what was the word? Features, future features. I'd like to see. Anyway, um, last thing I want to say as far as, you know, the issue of balancing, at least for new players, is, is one one video I found particularly helpful was a um, series by a YouTube user, what's his name, Two Clicks Philip. I'll put, put the uh, screen grab there on in frame. Uh, Game Making Journey, uh, it's a long series. I forgot exactly how many there are, like 15 or 16 installments, but it's number, number seven and number eight in particular is where he's talking about role-playing games and balancing and I think a lot of the same issues well one they stuck with me uh, things I remember and I try to keep it in the back of my mind in, in my own game development and yeah I'm not I'm making a, um, a AR, ARPG uh, this game is obviously not an RPG but I think there are some lessons in here that that transfer anyway and the one that always sticks in my mind is just how much you have to guide the new player. Uh, I, I think what his strategy was was to implement bosses in such a way that bosses almost acted like a test in school. Because you know what's the what's the point of a weed out class in school? Is you know if you're majoring in something, you get to that weed out class and you can't pass the weed out class. Well, then you probably couldn't succeed in the major. So it's best to find that out early before you invest a lot of time and money continuing your studies. I think bosses in video games kind of tend to work in the same way, at least for an RPG. You know, if you don't have the skills needed to beat the first boss, well then you don't have the skills needed to beat the future levels as well. So, you know, make, make the boss kind of like a test. Uh, I think for this game, what might help is to have uh, in campaign mode you know, sort of the same ideas, you know, your second or third campaign or so kind of acts like a test and steers the player into, you know, you know, mastering the fundamentals to the point that, you know, they have a better sense as to what they need to do when things get a lot harder. I think the best, I think one of the best ways to do that in a case like this is just remove options. Uh, I think as far as engagement, 
you know, if I had only two or three options, but I felt like I knew how to use them well, I think I would stay engaged. Um, you know, it's hard for me to say what I would think now since it's too late to have a first impression, but knowing me, I feel like that would be enough to keep me engaged. You know, just one or two options that I feel like I've mastered really well because then I have a win. That's, that's the thing. Is, you know, it feels good to have that win because that's, that's going to be the motivation there and then give me some new toys to play with. Anyway, um, just wanted to organize my thoughts a little bit better. But again, uh, fun start, I'd say. Would, would like to see more of this. But uh, that's all for for this time. So those of y'all that, that followed me along all this time, thanks for watching. And not sure when I'll have another one of these because you know these games get sent to me, and I make these videos as they're sent. So not sure when the next one will come out, but hopefully I'll see you all sometime for the next one.